Hi, my name is Charlie Cano and I'm with F5 Networks and I'm here today to talk to you about connecting to the cloud with F5 Big IP and VMware vMotion. This is a demonstration which we will be featuring at VMworld 2009 in San Francisco. So the idea here is to demonstrate how F5 and VMware can enable a secure live migration of a virtualized application and its storage from one site to another, all done without downtime and without user disruption. This leverages a number of technologies from both VMware and F5 and illustrates a complete solution in which application owners can migrate an application from one site to another or connecting to the cloud. Now all of this can be fully automated through scripting or integration of a workflow engine of your choice in the enterprise but what I'm going to do is walk through each of the discrete steps with you to show how it would work, and then we're going to do a live demonstration of migrating a virtual machine from one site to another. So in the initial environment, we have several components I want to talk about. There are two data centers, each with a complete vSphere environment, and in each data center we have a big IP local traffic manager, which manages the traffic to the application running in the virtual machine. We also have a Big IP Global Traffic Manager, which is responsible for directing users to the correct data center where the application is currently residing. So in the initial case, users are accessing the application in Site A, and vCenter is controlling the uh, management of the application and the virtual machine that it runs on. So the first step in this process is to connect the local data center to the cloud site or the secondary data center. And we do this connection through an iSessions tunnel, which is a feature of Big IP Local Traffic Manager. This iSessions tunnel uh, offers data compression as well as data deduplication and encryption. So this ensures that the traffic flow as we migrate the data store of the virtual machine and the virtual machine itself through this tunnel will be secure and optimized across the WAN. So, the first step is to execute the storage vMotion. And what we're doing here is vCenter has a connection to both a host in site A as well as site B through this iSessions tunnel. The storage vMotion migrates the storage of the virtual machine across to the data store in site 2. Now I just want to illustrate what goes on in these interim steps. So at this point we have storage of the virtual machine in site 2. The virtual machine is still in site 1 and as users are accessing the application, they hit the application and any storage traverses the iSessions tunnel. The next step is to vMotion the application itself or the virtual machine from the host in site A to site B. And again, this happens across the iSessions tunnel and arrives at the host in site 2. Now at this point, we have storage as well as the application running in Site 2, and we want to now communicate to F5 GTM to do the switchover of connections so that users accessing this application will now be directed to Site 2. Once this happens, new connections and new users into the application get directly routed to Site 2 as expected. However, an interesting point is users that were already accessing the site and already have active sessions will still be hitting site one and in this interim uh, period during the transition those users connections will be seamlessly rerouted through the tunnel from site one to site two. Now this is a transition period and will only happen while those active user sessions are alive. Eventually those sessions will end and we will only have new users accessing the application through data center two. So all existing sessions will have migrated off and now we have complete connectivity from users to the application in site two. At this point, it's essentially done. Uh, the application has been moved, its storage has been moved, and at this point we can register the virtual machine and that host with the vCenter in site two so that all management all storage and all compute resources are now in the cloud in Site 2. Optionally, if this is a one-way migration, you can restore the IPs or re, uh, reclaim those IPs 
to be used for other applications or other uses in Site 1. At this point, I would like to go ahead and do a live demonstration of moving a virtual machine from a data store, uh, um, excuse me, from a data center 1 to a data center 2. So what I'd like to do next is first introduce you to the different components we'll be using in this demonstration, and then we'll perform a live migration of virtual machine from a host in data center one into host in data center two. So the first piece is the web application. So we're running a Java pet store app, as you can see here, and this application is running in data center one in a virtual machine. And we're gonna be leveraging another feature of Big IP Local Traffic Manager, which is called iRules. And what iRules allow us to do is modify content in the web page as it's uh, passing through the LTM, either the request or the response. And we're using these iRules in each data center to show us uh, in the title here which data center the web application is being served from. So initially we will be in the San Francisco staging area, so we'll call it the SFO staging pet store, and we're going to be migrating it to Seattle production pet store. Um, simply showing or demonstrating what it would be like to migrate this into a cloud provider or say a secondary production data center. So the second component is our virtual center. And for the sake of time on this demo, what I'm going to do is migrate just the virtual machine over to the host and data center too, so that we can see the migration happen through the tunnel, the iSessions tunnel, as well as look at uh, how the traffic flow is managed across those two data centers. And the final piece is our big IP uh, dashboard. So this allows us to view the traffic in that tunnel connecting the two data centers. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start by initiating the migration from data center one into the host and data center two. And there we go. So we've started our migration. And if we now look over at our dashboard, we'll see here uh, we want to look at out to WAN. So we're getting about an 11 to 1 uh, compression ratio, 7 to 1. It varies a little bit, 25 to 1. And this is our data deduplication ratios. So we are getting um, a pretty good amount of deduplication. Uh, 30 to 1 on compression. So the performance through the tunnel is quite accelerated as you can see. And if we go back, we see that our migration is completed. So now let's go back to our application. And I'm an existing user session. So at this point in time, my connections are still hitting data center number one. Um, so if I surf the site, you'll notice here um, that the title has changed. So what's happened is the traffic is flowing through data center one across the tunnel to data center two. And that's represented by the I rule, as you can see, so it's changed. So the virtual machine is the Seattle production data center via SFO. So we're hitting data center one, traversing the tunnel and coming back. So you can see that the connection re redirection is working through, uh, through the tunnel from data center one to data center two. Now the other part of this I wanted to highlight is new connections. So as we mentioned, this client has a, a DNS cache, which takes a while to sort of refresh or time out. And during that time, we, we cleanly redirect them through the tunnel. But new sessions should go directly to data center two. So I'm gonna demonstrate that by opening up a new browser session. So this would be a new user to the application. And GTM should directly route them to data center two, as you can see has happened here. So new connections into data center two and existing connections routed through the tunnel across from one to two. So seamless user experience during the migration and accelerated performance moving that virtual machine from data center one to data center two. For more information or details on the complete solution, which would include the storage vMotion, as well as the ability to script or automate all of this through a workflow engine of your choice, or scripting, we are using, um, uh, can leverage APIs in vCenter, as well as the big IP iControl interface to automate all of this in a push button style. I do encourage you to go to f5.com slash VMware 
For more details on this solution as well as other solutions that F5 and VMware have worked on together. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.